everybody, this is Brendan, this is Anthony, hey. Common Motor Collective, it's common-motor.com on the internet. We're going to be doing a field repair here on Anthony's CB450. We've got a flat tire situation, and so uh, we're going to show you how to do this on your own, how to change the tire. People ask me this all the time, what does it take? Let's get into it. Actually, you can see where we are at the, the lovely corner of Bingle and uh, 290 here in Houston. So we're just going to sit here and uh, pop this thing off and change out the tube. As always, we want to show you what tools we're going to be using to do the job and also what parts we're going to be using to fix the front tires. So we got them laid out here. We had to grab them real quick on the fly at the shop. Uh, Phillips screwdriver, uh, 12 and 10 millimeter wrenches, a set of needle nose pliers, uh, our 3 8 ratchet with all of our metric sockets with an extension, a couple of adjustable wrenches, standard toolbox stuff, right? All right, the other ones that are important is tire bead popper. This is what helps remove the tire off the chrome rim. You have to use it with a mallet. So we're using our, our nylon mallet. Tire levers, got to use them to pry the uh, tire lip, or well, the tire bead off the rim. This is another tool that helps pry up the edge of the tire to get the tube onto the rim. Baby powder, we'll show you how that helps in a minute. A window. Blue brand window cleaner, your brand of choice. Tire gauge, this is a tire core removal tool for taking out the center of the valstum of a tire should we need to. A rib strip, new tube. On the 450, it's a 19 inch front tube, so we got a new tube for it. And of course, uh, an air pump, and we got an extension cord. So we're gonna start yanking that front tire off and using all of these. Okay, so our first couple steps are going to be to take the front tire off the bike, from wheel off the bike. I'm a ratchet handy. I'm using a 14 millimeter. We're going to loosen up the uh, loosen up these bolts here. Let's go ahead and, and take them off. Anthony's going to hold the bike stable. I'm going to start with the back one first. Loosen that guy up. Loosen that guy up. We're going to show you detail about these front fork caps that most people don't realize. It's our fork cap. Look very closely on our cap. Well, it's hard to see it's been painted. There's actually a little F mark that's cast into it, which indicates front. We can also kind of look at the cap this way. And if you notice that this side is a little bit taller than this side, so we put a straight edge across, there's actually a gap. So the taller side or the side with the F goes to the front. When we go to torque these on, we torque up the front one first. The back will have a little bit of a space on it, and we'll be tightening up the back to put the pressure on it. So it's important to kind of keep them, you know, with the right fork and the right orientation. I see them backwards on bikes all the time. People just don't know. We'll pop the other side off, and then we're going to use the milk crate here as a support to hold the bike up and uh, drop the front tire off. I right, got the front wheel off. We were not able to take the uh, front axle out. We don't have the tools for it, so we're going to have to work around it. Luckily, there's some grass right by where we were, so keeping the wheel on the grass so we don't hurt anything. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is, is pop the bead on the tire, even though it looks kind of popped already. But I'll show you how to use the bead popper tool anyway. The bead popper tool job is to separate the tire from the rim. Come in low, the mallet, see how it separates? Now this one's already loose, it's not going anywhere. But ideally, you go around the four corners, one, two, three, four, and break the tire loose. This one's already loose, so I'm not too worried about it, but we need to know. And especially if you have the tires that have been on the bike for a long time, they're gonna be stuck. My next thing is my, uh, my window cleaner. The window cleaner is a lubricant. I'm using it to take the rubber off the rim to help. It also dries clean, it's got alcohol in it, it doesn't leave the soapy residue. I'm going to do it in a small patch at a time, just kind of get this area nice and saturated. Since we're just doing a tube change, not a whole tire change, what we're going to be doing is taking off just the one bead here. We're actually not going to remove the whole tire from the bike. We're just going to remove uh, part of the tire. 
Okay. Got my tire levers. See, they're a little bit different shape. I'll rotate this towards myself. And actually, where's our valve stem hole? Our valve stem hole is right here, actually. Uh, so an important thing when you're taking a tire tube on and off is you never want to start here, you never want to end here, meaning you don't want to start prying up the tire here, or when you're getting the tire put back on, you don't want this to be the last part that goes on. In fact, you want it to be kind of 180 degrees out from there. So I'm going to rotate this to where that's facing away from me. Put a little bit more uh, Windex on here. Sorry, window cleaner. Done. Dun, dun. I get my tire levers in here. Get this tire off. I'm not worried about hurting anything right now since this is a, uh, a flat. So, I'm changing the tube out. And if you also noticed, I have the, uh, the rotor side up so we don't hurt anything with the rotor. Wrong second time. Here we go. All right. Got that one lip up there. Just gonna rotate it. Both of them. Hey Anthony, yep. can you hold the tire stable and also make sure this guy doesn't move? Yeah, having an extra set of hands helps a lot. There we go. Let's just start working the, the beat up. Slippery, I wonder why. Rotate. The goal of taking the tire off is to take, I call small bites. I don't want to take off a huge try to pry a big section. Usually uh, when it's kind of looser, about a three to four inch section. As it gets tighter, about a one to two inch section. This tire is actually fairly loose on this rim. It's a little bit older and it's been worn. When tires are brand new, they're like new shoes. They're really tight. Keep working it around. Perfect. All right. Be this popped. See that? I'm just going to reach in here. That's our inner tube there. And that's what happened. The, the valve stem tore out. So, yeah, I don't know who put this in and how they put it in, but uh, apparently didn't get the valve stem in the right spot. What will happen is the valve stem is supposed to be coming out the rim straight, but oftentimes the, the tube moves and the valve stem starts being pulled one direction or another which makes it easier for it to rip out. That's exactly what happened here. It looks like it was loaded towards uh, this side, I guess, and it just kind of peeled out that direction. So, yeah, this thing's toast. Adios. Our rim strip also broke on this tire. You see how it just tore? So we're gonna actually change that as well. Um, it's an often overlooked piece in, the, in the, doing a tire change. So if we haven't changed out your rim strips, change them out. You need them. Going. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna pull our rim for the tire. Here is our, our, our uh, valve stem hole. There's our valve stem hole on the new rim strip. The rim strip is kind of like a big rubber band. So I'm just gonna pull it on the tire, on the rim. Come on. I'll put it down, it might be easier. I'm gonna line it up. There we go. A lot of people ask what the rim strip does. The rim strip protects the, uh, here, at the back of these spokes here. All right, the spoke nipples are right here. See them? They'll dig into the tube and pop it. And so what the rim strip does is protect the inner tube from being chewed up by the, the nipples. I just want to say nipples. Where's the valve stem? Now where's the hole? There it is. There we go. Line up just like that. We're going to check to make sure that our rim strip is covering up all our nipples.
All right, we'll talk about the, uh, the valve stem here on the inner tube. Oftentimes you're gonna find two nuts in this kind of tapered washer. Tapered washer goes in the bottom. I like to leave the, uh, the first nut on there, kind of keep it secure and take that second one off. And what hap happens is the rail will get pinched between the two, the two nuts. I'm also gonna give the tube a little bit of shape because right now it's really flat and it's not gonna wanna go in the tire well. Um, this particular tube happens to have a valve core tool built into the end of the step, the cap. So I'm just going to remove the valve core and just inflate it a little bit. It's better. Just a little bit of shape to it, not super inflated. I'm going to put that valve core in the rest of the way. I did that because we don't have an air pump handy. We're going to have to fill the tire up later. So we'll come back to that. All right. Rim's got some shape to it, or two's got some shape to it. Need um, baby powder. Got my baby powder. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put some baby powder on the inside of the tire right here. Baby powder helps keep the tube from sticking inside the rim. And so I'm just gonna, gonna work some around the tire. It's all keep the stuff from sticking. Same deal, I'm gonna put some baby powder on the inner tube. That apply liberally. Oh man, I'm glad I wore my black pants today. <laughs> All right, our first next step is to get the inner tube, the valve stem, into the where the uh, valve stem goes in the tire. This is a really cool tool here. What it does is it helps pry up the tire. So you can actually get it in there, like that. The valve core. We're good. You let go, Anthony. All right, just got that started in there. I'm gonna tuck the tube in the rest of the way now. back on. Same deal. I want to use my uh, my Windex. Come on. There we go. I'm starting 180 degrees a little bit for my, uh, my valve stem. So when you put the tube back on, you know, the tire back in with the tube, you really just want to use smallest little bit of the tire lever as possible. Just the tip. Work around in small, you can take bigger bites out, and as it gets tighter, you'll take smaller bites out. It's actually going on pretty easy. But not all tires are this nice. They are varying degrees of tightness. I'm gonna spin that around. Hey, Anthony. Yep. Would you on this side without lever in place? Go ahead and put some more Windex on here. Just slowly kind of work the tire around. I'm gonna take a shot of how hot it is out right now. What's today? August. August third. August third. Fantastic. High of 103 today. Nice. I'm glad this tire and rim are black. Nice and cool with my hands. 
wearing black gloves. See how it's starting to get tight there? I'm gonna get a smaller bite, like that. Smaller bite. We're actually almost there. That's it, we're on. All right, next step, we'll put some air in it, see if it holds. Okay, tire's inflated, Anthony's sitting on the back of the bike, and we're gonna try to line all this stuff up, get it back on here. Looks good, It's good. All right, Anthony, I want you to teeter forward ever so slowly. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go, perfect. All right, so now the weight's back on the wheel, and we can go ahead and put our uh, caps back on. Our front side is the taller side. We're gonna put it on first. And for now, I'm just gonna get them in place. We'll worry about tightening it up here in a minute. Got that one, let's go with that. And that. There is a torque value on these front caps. It's about 18 foot-pounds. We don't have a torque wrench with us, so we're gonna have to just do it by feel. Um, but ideally, once you get back to the shop, we'll loosen them up, tighten them up with a torque wrench. But like I said, we're just trying to get them back on the road so that it's snug but not over tight because you can't break this stud without too much force. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut these down. I'm gonna loosen the back one up. Do the front one first. Again, they're supposed to be about 18 to 20 foot pounds. Anthony, you hold the handlebars. And I know I've been using these wrenches for a long time about how much torque. Stop there. Stop there. Rerouting your uh, brake cable. In fact, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna tighten up that zip tie so it don't move. Mm -hmm. It's kind of rubbing over there. Yeah. Cool. All right. So bike is back together. Uh, we inflated the tire. Got everything torqued up. So hopefully Anthony can uh, ride to the shop safely. Um, get back there in one piece. Uh, working on the streets of Houston will be the first time I'm working on the streets. You're probably going to find yourself in a similar situation sometimes, so it's important to know how to do it. Uh, also, remember, check your tire pressure before you leave on every trip. Help keep this type of stuff from happening, all right? It's always really important. Check your oil, check your tire pressure. I'm Brendan, it's Common Motor Collective, common-motor.com on the internet. Uh, thanks to Anthony, thanks to Tom for filming, thanks to Mountain Dew Code Red for sponsoring the uh, piece of plastic we sat on, and to this gas station right here. We're out. Uh.